Okay. Okay, good afternoon, gentlemen. So once again, this is Dr. Bayani Almasen. I will be your facilitator for today's session. And our topic is something about making a powerful presentation. Okay, remember you are going to do your demonstration teaching. And please remember the following pointers for you to be able to uh, be confident about what you are going to present is something that you are very proud of because you know what you are going to do. Okay? So the first is that uh, each presentation has a specific purpose. Okay? Uh, why are you going to present? What information are you going to present? Why are you going to present that particular information? And all of this will be found in your intended learning outcome. So what are you going to promise to your student? What is the relevance and significance of the information that you are going to present? And what is the relation to their life as seafarers or any uh, other occupation that they will uh, have in the future for them to be able to live a meaningful life, productive, and that they will become responsible citizens of the country where they are and the community in which they are going to live. So when you stand in front and because you are going to deliver a lecture or you are going to present an information, make sure that uh, the audience are guided on what to expect from you. Because you are an authority, uh, you have established the motivation and the inspiration for the listeners that they will believe in you because you have the credibility of telling an information coming from you because you are a teacher, an information or a presenter. And then, um, oh, uh, before I was talking about the use of body language. Okay, so do not be so steep like this. No, uh, suggest action because it it you know uh, exudes emotion also, and that suggests dynamism, and the student will be very actively listening to you. Okay, do not uh, stand in front like a pause, and that uh, gives certain action for students to listen to you. And then organize the presentations in ways that create lasting impressions. Because what they will see from you will leave an indelible mark on the minds of your listeners and audience. So therefore, if you present uh, haphazardly and that without any, you know, uh, dynamism that, that suggests an action that your students, you are worth listening by your audience, then... Uh, useless doing a presentation. Okay, so organize your presentation to create lasting impressions. And one of which is the use of the instructional uh, aids such as PowerPoint presentations which I had presented to you before. Remember? Okay, so uh, get into the important points right away, but start off and close with a bomb. How do you, uh, what do you mean by that? Start with a bomb. Okay, so, the, the, the example is, just, today we are going to talk about, no, use your uh, energy because it radiates in your face. The students will feel it whether you are actively, you know, involved, you know what you are talking about, you are confident about what you are talking because you are knowledgeable about the subject or something like that. Or, you know, you ease out and uh, leave the burden. Do not carry your baggage if you have a problem outside with your wife, with your girlfriend, any other thing. Forget about it when you are doing a presentation. Uh, your face will radiate no? uh, and suggest that you are actually in good shape. Okay? So next, manage your audience participation using a communication cycle of speaking, checking, and listening. Okay? So there are three things here. Number one is speaking. So when you are speaking, how do you know that your students, uh, students or audience are listening to you? How do you know that they are listening? Yeah, the eye contact, they are looking at you. What else? Participating. Like, it's, when you say participating, they may ask questions. That is the, the ultimate. But just looking at them, how do you know that they are listening to you? They are smiling, they are nodding, they are negating. It's something like, you know, I will be a little biased again. So, na Indians, when they say, uh, yes, 
and they say no <laughs> or whatever. Okay, so they are looking at you, of course, smiling and sometimes they frown. Now, even if they do not agree with you, it is still a proof that they are listen, listening to you. So, in other words, not not all the things that you will say may be believable. Okay? Some of, of them may not believe in you. But if you are saying a fact, and it is tested, experimented, and it is proven to be true, I don't care if you don't believe in me. But what I'm saying is true as far as I am concerned, because I have my legal basis, I have my source, I have my reference, and according to... That's why you will see that reporters, you know, newscasters, they will always say, according to, according to. So that it's a fact that it, what I am saying is true. Now, the author, whether it's saying it's true or not, is beyond your control. Okay? But what you say, according to the author, is true. Because, totoo naman sinabi niya. Diba? So that's uncontestable. Okay? So, manager audience participation is speaking, please checking and listening. Okay. Now, the, the proof also that they are listening is when you throw questions, they're able to answer. Even if they answer, I don't know the answer, sir, it is, is still an indication that they are listening to you. It's just that they do not know the answers. Okay. And, fill your questions like a professional. So, before I told you about Direct questioning and overhead questions. Overhead questions, you ask the question first before you, you call a particular participant. And then direct questioning is you call the participant and then ask your question. Okay, Whether what is the intention of your asking question, that it will depend to you. But what I think I'm saying is, when you ask questions, do not ask the sleeping participants. Because they may answer, so you answer the question because you're sleeping. Eh, what about if the answer is because I am sleepy in your class because you are a very a lousy instructor so it gets back to you and please be afraid that your students will answer that way so save your face do not ask questions to those who are sleeping or those who are not listening and generally a teacher uh, sometimes ask questions to those who are not raising their hands that's unfair. Because why are you going to ask a person something that you are sure that they don't know? So that's embarrassing them and putting them on bad light and they may, you know, uh, create a repercussion you have to face later of the consequences. Okay? So if you are doubtful that people do not know the answers, do not ask them. Maybe you ask those who are raising their hands. Okay? Facilitate presentation smoothly and seamlessly. When you are presenting, you are the boss. You know, you know the subject. You are the you are the star of the show. So there is no other person who is responsible for that presentation except you. So think about it that you are on top of all. You are in control. You manage the group. Uh, you you are the one responsible for. Uh, the control of the proceedings and nobody else. And therefore, the presentation, you know, may, you may start as a little bit nervous. I said it's okay to be nervous because uh, it's a sign that you are normal. If you don't feel nervous, you are abnormal. Why? Because it's a natural feeling. Okay, so therefore, uh, if you feel nervous, anyway, it will dull it down naturally. You will never know, oh my God, I am already talking and I know what I'm talking about. And continuously you are already talking. You will never know uh, that you are on this kind of phase. And it's okay. There will always be the first time. I, it happened to me too. That the first time that I start uh, talking in public, I feel very nervous. And that's normal. And then suddenly, even if you face anybody, then you take it uh, lightly and have answers prepared because you know your topic, uh, you know the subject matter, uh, think about the possible questions your students may ask you, the participants may ask you. And then there are questions which are not answerable anyway because I told you nobody has the monopoly of knowledge. Nobody know. There is nobody who knows everything, okay? Especially if you will be involved in adult learning. 
Because the experience will never be wrong. You cannot say that, ah, Cap, you have been on board this kind of vessel, but what you have experienced is not correct. Huh? Why will you say that? It happened to me. Okay, will you contest what I had experienced? No. Because every person is a story to tell. Every person has a story to, to share, and the experience will never be wrong. So you have to respect the opinion, the feeling of anybody in the group. Any of your audience may have, they feel the same. Oh, let's see a movie. Okay, let's watch Exxon Valdez. So what do you think about what happens? Uh, uh, the story is not very good. No, it is very good. You cannot contest. Because that's how they see it. If the students see it is, is color blue, you cannot force them to say that it is green. Because that's how they see it. Okay? So accept all the answers. If you have questions, accept all the answers. Because these are opinion and feelings. But, if the answer go against an international regulation, rules of the road, a policy, a national uh, law, that's when you intervene and you inject what is right. Kasi kung, kung ang sagot nila ay taliwas sa isang batas o kaya na ipinatutupad, Republic Act or uh, 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 Collision Regulations Law, uh, like uh, the UN clause, wala kang magagawa kung hindi itama yung kanilang paniniwala. Because you may be breaking a law, but if it is an opinion or a feeling, then accept all the answers. What is developed when you do this? One, you develop communication. Okay? Because there are exchange of ideas, they are speaking, they are talking, they are developing their communication skills, their assertiveness, initiative, probably leadership when you group them in, uh, as, as a method of teaching or etc. Okay? So anything may be positive. So look at it as something that is a learning exercise. And do not, is to, do not control or stop the participants in discovering their, you know, their creativity, their artistic expression, how they say it. Um, next time we will be talking about case study and, and, and this will dig more on how you are going to, you know, discover the creative uh, thinking and logical thinking of your participants if you get into instruction or teaching. Now, some of the answers are not answerable because there is actually no answer. Some of them you may not answer because you do not know. Now pass on to your students. Oh, there is a question here. Who knows the answer? Okay, who wants to answer? If there is no answer at all, then I will answer the question next meeting. I'm going to research on it. Or if the, I do not know the answer, can you answer your own question? Because sometimes you will feel that the participants are just trying to outsmart you. They would like to create an image that they know better than you. Okay? And it will always happen to you that there will be a challenge. It, it, it's not wrong to accept that you do not know. To accept that you are wrong. What is important is you, you lay your card on the table. Uh, admit that I, I do not know the answer. I have not experienced it. I have not read it. I have no basis for answering it. Can you answer your question? Oh, there is a question here, class. Uh, uh, how many knows the answer? Who has another idea? Who has an opinion about this? But do not say no right away. Do not say yes right away for purposes of, you know, just accepting the information and etc. You will just say yes. Okay? And then practice. Diba? There is a saying that practice makes perfect. Nobody is... Uh, no... No crap... Uh, no person has, has, you know, the artists, uh, the sculptures, the uh, people who, uh, who draw or make uh, illustrations or something is perfect at once. Uh, a lot of things can be learned and studied, moved towards perfection. So maybe it's only God that created the earth that is perfect, created the world that is perfect right away. But in teaching and instruction, you can practice. Develop your communication skills, even your 
delivery of your language. Now, if uh, if you are from Iloilo, of course you you are you are a Filipino, and then you are somebody is an Ilonggo, and then we have a Filipino of different nationality. No, I'm just just kidding. Okay, so practice makes perfect. So this may be your first time, but there will always be the second time until you perfect your presentation. So use a variety of presentation equipment. For purposes of lecture, you are just going to use PowerPoint presentation. If you have an equipment that you use for instruction to complete this instruction, then you may use it. But the instructional aid will only be uh, use, uh, using this uh, platform. Okay? So PowerPoint presentation and use of, it's like design high impact visual aids. What do you mean by high impact visual aids? Aids that would relate, no, and understandable universally by the participants. So when you when you present a picture or a drawing to so everybody, uh, what do you see in the picture? It's an airplane. No, it's a bird. So if, if there are uh, interpretations or different answers, that means it is not universal. Okay. Um, use a variety of percent, uh, I said that. So design high impact visual aids. So high impact visual aids are visual aids that create lasting impressions, leaves an indelible mark on the minds of the participants that they will never forget you. Handle difficult students or audience. How do you do that? Now, in your in experience, if you teach uh, in the future, you will notice that there are participants who are trying to outsmart you, they will try to manipulate the class, they will try to prove that they know better than the others. Very common. You will always experience this. So what uh, you have to do is just just take the person. Accept the person. He's a paying client. Uh, he's, he's a customer. Uh, your salary may be taken from what they are paying. But they do not have the license to you know, outsmart you or uh, ridicule you or uh, prove that he is better than you is not correct. Yun lang. Hindi mo siya papayagan na lumampas pa siya doon. But take it. In 6.09, there are cases uh, my assistant will always say, Sir, you have a very smart student. And I said, never mind. One or two days, he will be very noisy. And on the third day, we, we, we start writing the lesson plan. He will keep quiet. Because it's very difficult to write intended learning outcome or etc. So that's it. So leave it there. Accept your students like they know better. Okay, he knows better. He's a captain, he's a tip engineer. Never mind, respect that. Because there will come a time that uh, he will start uh, to keep quiet. And I had experienced that a lot. Okay? And audience members seem distracted soon after a presentation has begun. Now, when you start uh, introducing yourself, okay, my name is Dr. Bayan al -Masen. I'm a doctor of education, I've been teaching for 30 years, I've been on board different vessels, I've studied different methods of teaching, strategies, blah, blah, blah. So, you presented a lot of your qualification. Boom! And then, when you start teaching the subject matter, your students will know whether you deserve to be talking about all your qualifications. Blah, 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 blah. They will judge you for that. So, just to play safe, do not overdo your self-introduction. What do I mean? Do not put so much that they will expect a lot from you. Because if that happens, they may feel disappointed. Uh, you fail them. You, you, they lack uh, trust on you. And your credibility is destroyed. And I was telling, if you have 12 students, then... It's just a one text away. 24 is people know already how you are, how you perform, and your credibility is destroyed. Just a wink of an eye. So do not overdo, do not overintroduce, do not, do not tell lies. Your students will feel that. They will, they will know whether, oh, Dr. Bayan, bakit mo siyang carpintero? It happened to me in Malaysia. I, I, I was about to sleep and I feel I, I need to uh, to eat something. So I went down. I was on the 12th floor of a building in Kuala Lumpur. And then I, I heard uh, two Filipinos talking, Filipina, in the 
is something like mini mart like 7-Eleven or something downstairs of the condo so i was wearing my sando it's it's it, a little bit turned here i was wearing short and etc and i heard so i said oh are you filipino ay kuya tsaka ang kagaling kuya ano ba sabi ko ay diyan ako nakatira i stay in the 12th floor and i am a professor in the university of malaya and then uh, nagwhisper yung isa pero hindi ko naman narinig they just admitted after na I was invited in the, it's an ex-condo. Uh, sabi niya, Professor, sabi niya, ba't mukha naman karpintero? <laughs> diba? So, if you talk about you are a professor and you look like a carpenter, then probably that's what they be, that's what be thinking. And then when, uh, I, we, uh, we, we did marketing, so, so we will be cooking uh, tonight. Can we invite you for dinner? Or, of course. So I went there with, you know, nag-base ako ng kaunti, siyempre, naka-Levi's, naka-Uniqlo, naka-whatever. Ay, professor na, hindi na karpintero because they look at me. So, oh, professor ba yan? Bakit mukhang karpintero? So it's a challenge on your, stud- on your audience that when you are uh, doing your lecture, you may be distracted by, you know, these people. Teacher ba yan? Teacher ba namin yan? So the first time I went to to IDES, I, it's not the first time actually because ev- every week uh, we can go to Manila, we are provided with uh, transportation uh, in IDES. And one time I was not able to join my ride. So I joined the students and the participants going to Subic. It's Victory Liner, it's parked in Intramuros and uh, students who will be <coughs> taking courses in Subic will be going to Intramuros. So I joined them. So, I was bugoy-bugoy, you know, I was wearing short, uh, backpack, of course, my sombrero is, you know, I have to hide uh, the reality. And then, I was sitting by, by a participant, too. It's, I think he's an oiler, or maybe I forgot that. And as, uh, sabi niya, bro, sabi niya ganun, anong module mo? Sabi ko, basic safety, PSSR, appeal, sabi niya ganun, kaklase tayo. <laughs> Sabi ko, ay, okay, sabi ko. And then we stopped in, how many have trained in Subic, in IDES? We stopped in Double Happiness. It's a restaurant where uh, bus stops and then you eat. And so, apiran pa din kami ngayon. We, we were laughing at each other. And then in the morning of Monday, uh, everybody has to fall in line because we have the flag ceremony. So he was looking, uh, he was uh, looking at, uh, at me, nasaan kaya yun? And then he saw me in the line of the faculty uh, with with my uniform, with IDES here, ganun, ganun. and then I look at him and he was uh, doing like this to me. And then when I end, because it's the first period, it's, it's, I, I will be the instructor. So when I get in, he was hiding his face. Because he did not know that I am his instructor. Okay, that may, may happen. So we can be, you know, uh, relate to your participants because we are handling adult learners. Just don't break the wall between you and the, to separate that. Of course, an instructor is an instructor. So you can uh, establish relationships. You can uh, destroy the gap between you, but do not uh, let your students lose that respect to you. Okay? Just because it's another challenge. Okay? And the presenters lack the confidence and poise needed to interact well with the customers or the audience because you know, this is your first time and you feel a, a little bit nervous and you may, you know, a little bit uh, timid and, and, and you are hesitant to talk at first. That's normal. It's a challenge. Because when you start talking, as I was saying, then suddenly, slowly, oh my God, you're already talking. Your, your English is good, but I need class. Okay, so, audience members take over any discussion or presentation, my God, I had experienced this a lot, that uh, I cannot uh, talk anymore because a participant or a student is talking a lot. And it's not his story. Ah, he's, he always raised his Okay. And then the next time, uh, would you like to uh, change places with me? <laughs> would you like to stand here and then you do the talking? But you have to do it in a form of a job that is acceptable because they may not accept it and they feel insulted, and you know, they get angry, as I was telling you before. Okay? So, some of the participants may 
you know, manipulate the discussion and they talk a lot and let it be. Give them that. But, you know, I'm giving you three minutes to talk about it. Okay, stand by and talk for three minutes. You see, at least he will know how far he can go. Okay? Or you you want me to uh, stay out and then you will take over or something. You offer that. But do it in a nice way that you Nervousness and nervous habits cloud otherwise effective presentation. So see, so suddenly you will lose your nervousness and then slowly you become more confident what you're doing and then you will never know, oh my God, you're finished with your presentation. And then persuasive presentations end with a specific call to action. So the ones which I was telling you before that uh, it's called for another um, avenue for research that they will look for more information related to your information so that it confirms because in an instruction there are some re miracles that may happen. Number one, uh, information may be an addition to their knowledge. That's number one. Uh, from grade one, you go to grade two, so the, the level of information and, and the amount of information increases as we age. As, as, as time goes on, from uh, first year to second year to third year, etc. Okay? So it is just, just, you know, learning more and more and more and more. Okay? So therefore, um, if you started with another information, the participants will say, Ah, yes. I, I, I thought for a while that there are uh, uh, 22 languages in Philippines or dialects. Yeah. Oh, it, it is now 25. So, I, my knowledge is added. Something like that. Uh, there are about 11. Uh, uh, there are about uh, 5 international languages in the world. Okay, Spanish is one of them. Of course, English is number one. But now it is already 8 international languages. So, in other words, before I don't know it, and then the students will confirm so, addition and confirmation, these are miracles that happen. So, my knowledge is that, thank you, sir, nadagdagan ng kaalaman ko. Thank you, sir, it gave me another information that has added to my knowledge. Okay? And the third one is very crucial. Because leader learning is a dangerous thing. And what has been learned for adults is very difficult to erase. Okay? So, the, 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 the third one is deletion. My God, I was fooled by my former instructor because he said that there are only four types of fire, four classes of fire, and I, now I know it is five. So I was cheated by my former instructor. So I delete the previous information and then replace it with the new one. Did you get it? So they may believe you or they may not believe you. An example, mommy, my daughter, uh, in this morning, um, my, my, my teacher uh, told me that when we were born, uh, we, uh, no, we came out from uh, the vagina. And my mommy told me that we came out uh, from the stomach, it's a miracle, and etc. So something. So my, my mom is, is not uh, telling the truth. The teacher. Uh, is the one uh, telling the truth or uh, because it, 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 it's something like a magic and then my daughter was said kung doon kami lumabas ay di ang baho so something like that so in other words information may be added it may be deleted and may be confirmed and you can do a lot of miracles in these cases that's a challenge so you can persuade your students that what you are telling is true or maybe not true. Because, sus, professor daw eh, mukha naman janitor or carpenter. Or, because there has been a construction at, at, at the end of the mart. At, at, parang gumawa ng extension yata yung, yung ano, mini mart. So may mga carpenter doon na some of them are Filipinos. Okay, napagkama lang ako ngayon. Anyway, so, do you have any question? So the presentation will go, be good for uh, 10 minutes, one of which is your, uh, you'll be tested on your communication skills. 
your platform skills, whether you are nervous, um, did you follow the lesson plan as written, uh, your English is good, but I did cuss, what else? You are dressed for the occasion because you look like a teacher, not a seafarer. What else? Your PowerPoint is good according to acceptable standards, which I have told you before. Your uh, control of the class, no? Uh, participation of the class is one uh, which will be tested. How do you involve your student? Are they engaged? When you present your intended learning outcome, remember you are facing your students already. So do not talk in the third person point of view at the end of the session. The students should be able to because you're already facing your students. How do you say it? At the end of the session, I want you to, or you are expected to. So do not address them as students anymore. Use the first person point of view. Okay? Amen. So thank you so much. I hope that I have given you enough um, information or how do you call it? Reminder for you to be able to uh, deliver your presentation on your demo teaching. That's the next exercise. Okay? So once again, good afternoon and magbabalik po ang the bugs. <laughs>